Welcome back to the podcast. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been in here recording any new episodes, and I know that now that I'm back, you're going to love how I'm thinking about things. I know you'll get a lot out of this particular series. For those of you who don't know, I made my trip across the country. Well, not all the way across the country. I went from Arizona, and I'm back in Kansas at the farm where I lived when I was in grad school. I'm just really, really enjoying springtime in Kansas. There's an explosion of green happening right now. I'm looking out my window and though the sky is gray, the leaves on the trees are immensely green and abundant and uh, the fairies are about and the angels are about and it just is a lovely time here. So that that is where I'm broadcasting from today and today's topic is really a response to a new program that I just started offering Mm, a couple weeks ago, actually. It's called Wired for Wealth. And uh, these are 60-minute activation sessions where I'm really tapping into my clients' brains and figuring out what needs to shift and what needs to be optimized in order for them to allow in immense amounts of wealth into their businesses. Because here's what I know for sure is that I'm here to activate leaders and as leaders we require immense amounts of wealth in order to fulfill our highest callings in order to advance our missions and so if that is you I know that you'll get a lot out of this episode so here's where we're going to start today I got a message in my messenger on Facebook from somebody who I don't know But she asked a very, very good question. She said uh, she was asked by a psychic recently if she was neurodiverse, if she had ADHD or if she had autism. And she said, I don't have either of those, but I think I'm neurodiverse. How do I know for sure? And I always take questions like that as a question from the collective. I know that there are a lot of you who have been in social media with me, watching me talk about Wired for Wealth. I know that there are those of you who are kind of tiptoeing around the edges, trying to figure out if it's the right fit for you or not. Uh, These sessions are very powerful and I'm going to be sharing more about them as we go through this episode. But for right now, I want to start with the big question, which is how do I know if I'm neurodivergent? How do I know if I have a neurodiverse brain? Because there are a lot of you in the spiritual entrepreneur space who say, well, I don't have ADHD. I don't have autism. I feel like I'm a little bit weird. And I've always felt like I'm a little bit weird. And that actually is one of the key uh, hallmarks of having a neurodiverse brain is feeling a little bit weird and quirky and different from everybody else. But I really want to dive in today to the very specifics uh, as I know them about neurodiversity. You know, I've spent my entire career with my PhD in psychology working with twice exceptional people. Twice exceptional people are those who have fast brains in our heads. So they're high intellect. And they have something else going on in their brains, a neurodiversity. So that is the perspective that I come from. I always look at intelligence and I look at what else is going on in the brain that is going to create differences, to make them feel different from everyone else, to allow them to perceive differently than most other people and so on. And so I want you to listen to this this list. It's basically a list. It's not exhaustive. I'm sure that we can find more ways that uh, neurodiversity shows up, but I think this will give you a really good picture and help you decide for yourself if you are neurodiverse, if you identify as neurodiverse. So let's go ahead and dive in. And by the way, this list is not meant to diagnose or treat any mental illness. If you've got something going on in your brain that is causing a lot of problems in your life, I do encourage you to you know, you can reach out to me and I can have a conversation with you if I'm a good fit to support you or if there's somebody who is a better fit to support you, I will be happy to make that rec- recommendation as well. So I will say this, in addition to feeling like a big weirdo when you were a little kid, I'm going to say that if you're wondering if you're neuro- neurodiverse, that's usually a pretty in- good indicator that you are, that you've got something going on in your brain that makes you quite different from the average bear. And these conditions, these are the ones that I've encountered over the last 15 years that I've been in my work with twice exceptional people. Again, those are the people who are both 
highly intelligent and have some other brain-based condition. So besides ADHD, which is largely uh, an attentional deficit, a cognitive deficit, and autism spectrum disorder, uh, you might consider yourself neurodivergent if you have or suspect you have any of the following. Are you ready? Because this is a long list. We're going to blow your mind with how many things are on this list because I think that we get very narrow-minded or narrowly focused on who's neurodiverse and who is not. And I think that you will find, since you're listening to me, you're in my space already, chances are quite good that you're, you're going to fit into some of this. You're going to identify, I'll say, with some of these, uh, these characteristics or these uh, conditions. So the first one I want to bring up is bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. So it involves uh, having hypomanic, very, very expansive episodes or, or even manic episodes, which can tip into delusions and hallucinations and, and uh, very difficult experiences with reality, I'll say. And sometimes people are actually hospitalized during manic episodes, uh, followed by periods of depression as well. So that's the bipolar in bipolar disorder. That is uh, one that Nobody ever really talks about in the entrepreneurship space that I'm aware of. I think a lot of times we're talking more about ADHD and autism spectrum, but bipolar is another one that can really create some uh, problems with cash flow. It can create, it can cap your business actually. And that is a point to all of this, by the way, is to say that, gosh, you probably don't need more strategy in your business. You probably don't need more coaching on tactics or anything like that or how-tos or anything like that. What you really need to do is understand your brain and uh, make some adjustments to the brain, optimize it so that uh, you can allow in the money to come into the business in the way that it's meant to, doubling, tripling, and so on, your revenues in a very short period of time. Once you really understand how the brain is wired and once we optimize it, it will make a big difference in terms of how you're able to actually carry out the strategy that you've invested so much money in over the course of your business. So in addition to bipolar disorder, we have, I'm just going to run down this list and see for you which ones land. Dyslexia, hyperlexia, and hyperlexia is if you are reading at a very young age at very, very high grade levels, like beyond what would be expected for a five-year-old if you're reading at a 12-year-old level or reading chapter books when you were a little kid, that would be considered a hyperlexia dyscalculia, dysgraphia, mis misophonia. Misophonia is a sensitivity to sounds, a sensitivity to people chewing, to squeaks, to uh, anything that is uh, disruptive to the auditory nerve, I will say. So if you, for me, my, uh, my misophonia comes while I'm driving the car and I'll hear a rattle in the back. Oh, that just sets my teeth on edge. Uh, one of my friends has a chewing thing, like when somebody else is chewing, if they're chewing too loudly or crunching on an apple or something like that, that sets her teeth on edge. And then uh, synesthesia is another one that is, we don't talk about it very much, but this one is fascinating. This is where more than one sense is involved in your experience. So people with synesthesia will, um, for example, when they look at numbers, like literally the number five, they will see the number five as a color, or they will see the number five as masculine or feminine. Uh, they will um, perhaps hear something that goes along with the number. So there's kind of a cross wiring of sensory experience. So they don't just experience the number five as a vi visually, they'll also experience it through their, their hearing or their sense of smell. Their, their imagination, their sense of sight that goes beyond just the, the visual experience of the number five, but the color or the, the frequency of it will show through. Another form of synesthesia is uh, hyper empathy. So if you've ever watched somebody on TV get hurt, get shot at, break an arm, something like that, and you feel that in your own body, that would be a form of synesthesia as well. And that is actually uh, something that would I would say qualify to neurodiversity. And then we have the uh, neuroticism fa factor on the uh, neo personality assessment that I give. And if you've got any kind of neuroticism in your personality profile, chances are, well, 100% that you have a neurodiversity. So neuroticism at a, on a big scale is how sensitive are you to stress and how emotionally reactive are you? 
And uh, so when we get into the nitty gritty of that, what we're looking at in terms of the facets are things like generalized anxiety. Are you a chronic worrier and have you been so for a long, long time? Do you live with anxiety every single day? And do you live with more anxiety than most people live with? In other words, in a room of 100 people, do you experience more uh, worry, concern, overthinking regarding uh, negative outcomes more than most people do. And if you do, chances are quite good that that would qualify as a neurodiversity. Uh, we also have social anxiety, being highly, highly sensitive to social environments, feeling awkward in social situations, not knowing quite what to say or how to, how to navigate social situations. That would be the social anxiety, which would also be a neurodiversity, obsessive compulsive disorder, and depression would be another one that would I would look at and say, yes, this is a neurodiversity. If you have ADHD, autism, or another form of neurodiversity, I've got great news for you. Your brain is actually wired for immense amounts of wealth. But the reason it's not here yet is because you've been following the guidance from those who don't know how your brain is wired and why. So no matter what program you join, you won't see the results you desire because your wonderful and wealthy brain is simply coded differently. You can keep investing in programs that don't get you and your unique wiring, or you can invest in a Wired for Wealth session like my other neurodiverse clients do and receive instant clarity about how to clear your brain of money blindness and other blocks for enormous wealth so that your income can double effortlessly. You'll understand why certain ways of making money will never work for you and gain clarity about what will. And I'll instantly clear trauma and patterns from your brain that are capping your income and your client flow. If you're tired of banging your beautiful brain against the wall and are ready to wire it for wealth, message me right now about my 60 minute Wired for Wealth session. Spaces are limited and will likely feel filled before too long. So I recommend you reaching out now. We'll put all of the enrollment information in the show notes. And if you have more questions about it, you can email me at Robin, R-O-B-Y-N at drrobinmckay.com. I'll look forward to connecting with you and wiring your brain for wealth. And then we have, uh, in addition to those features on the personality, then we have some just straight up brain-based conditions that are going to mark neurodiversity. One is traumatic brain injury. So think about things like concussions or shaken baby syndrome. And I will like you to know at this point, you know, I'm here for the channels, for the intuitive channels. And um, the many, many of the channels who I have interviewed and who I have conducted the Neo Personality Profile on actually have a history of head injuries, myself included. I've had uh, several concussions as a young woman playing sports and so on. Uh, but that seems to be a common um, thread or a golden thread, I will say, among all of the intuitive channels that I work with. So traumatic brain injury, concussion, shaken baby syndrome would be another form of traumatic brain injury. So when the brain gets hit up against the skull, it's going to create swelling, inflammation, and sometimes even permanent brain damage as a result of that violent act. And that, of course, would also qualify for trauma. And trauma would be another experience that somebody would have that would actually change how the brain perceives, how the brain processes information, uh, how the brain reacts to external stimuli and so on. Uh, the trauma can be physical, emotional, mental, sexual. It can be vicarious trauma as, as well. Watching somebody else experience great trauma still qualifies as trauma. Just because it didn't happen to you, even if you saw it happening, the brain can be uh, traumatized as a result of that. And trauma would qualify to me as a neurodiverse condition. Finally, you are almost definitely neurodivergent if you're highly intelligent. Intelligence is a form of neurodiversity. And what I mean by intelligence is simply processing speed, how quickly you catch on to things, make sense of them, and know what to do about them has to do with intelligence on a very basic level. Intelligence and processing speed is a neurological, I will say, condition. In other words, uh, the faster your nervous system processes information, the faster you figure things out. So if you're highly intelligent, you have a high processing speed. Oftentimes, people like that were in gifted education or grade skipped 
They were the smartest one in the class, for example. They scored super high on standardized tests. Maybe they scored in the top 5 to 7% in IQ testing as well. But if you've got a really fast brain in your head, uh, I will qualify that as being neurodiverse. If you are highly creative, so creativity shows up on the Neo personality profile that I've been referring to as being highly open to experiences, being very, very imaginative, uh, having a strong sense of aesthetic, needing requiring beauty around you uh, and cultivating beauty in your life and in the world, uh, having a profound need to travel, to go new places, to see the world, to have new experiences, requiring novel experiences as part of uh, the creative personality as well. And along with being highly creative would mean that you're also being recognized for your creativity by your peers, by your colleagues, by the uh, gatekeepers in your in your field as well. So far, I've mentioned high intelligence, high creativity, high highly innovative, being highly innovative in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. That would be another way that you would your brain would differentiate itself from everybody else's brains on the planet. Being recognized for your innovations, like having patents, developing products and services, and other influential contributions in tech, science, engineering, healthcare. Uh, the social sciences. And then the last one I will say is if you are highly intuitive and consider yourself emotionally intelligent, socially intelligent, people like that are going to show up. Well, they're like me, right? Spiritual advisors, being very, very invested in studying consciousness, being very invested in bringing about transformation, uh, activating leaders, showing up as trance channels, intuitive guides, intuitive channels, psychics, mediums, etc. If you're highly intuitive, your brain is wired way differently than everybody else's. And for that reason, I would consider you neurodivergent as well. So bottom line is this, any of these conditions and characteristics are considered neurodiversity. First of all, you can have more than one. You can have ADHD and a traumatic brain injury and be highly intuitive. And uh, that combination is certainly uh, on my radar as somebody who has a neurodivergent brain, a fast and quirky brain is what I will say in a very loving um, and affectionate way, just like mine. I love my fast and quirky brain and I love yours as well. You know, from a business perspective, here's what I'm looking at and here's what I'm very invested in. Actually, I will even go so far as to say I'm obsessed with this is that any of these conditions alone is going to cap your income. When you have more than one of them that you're trying to work through and also run a business and also break through multi six figures, seven figures, eight figures, wherever you are, there is going to reach a point where your brain just can't do it anymore. You're going to hit a glass ceiling on in terms of your income. And I would even go so far as to say that if you've got any of these conditions, it's probably a good chance that your business is only bringing in about 20 to 25% of what is actually possible for it. And that is why I keep on saying you don't need to invest in any more strategy. Unless you are a brand new entrepreneur who has no idea how to list build or how to have a sales conversation or how to uh, grow your business in a certain way, most of the people who are coming into my world are more advanced in their businesses. They have made their first six figures, their multi six figure, even seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. And so strategy is not the problem. The problem, if there is one, is that the brain is having to work overtime to uh, focus its way through all of the um, idiosyncrasies that are present in it. And that you have done as well as you have for as long as you have is really a testament to how very bright and determined you actually are. But there reaches a point where um, I will say your brain gets fatigued and you go into paralysis. You go into ADHD paralysis or neurodivergent paralysis where you don't know how to start or where to start a strategy or you taper off halfway through and you don't finish, right? I know that probably that sounds familiar to you. And uh, I want to look here because there are a couple of other things that I will say are also um, very challenging to people who have neurodiverse brains in our heads. 
I will also say that uh, the thing about being neurodiverse and running, a, especially a spiritually based business, is that we have this we still have this highly competitive aspect to ourselves. And we also are, generally speaking, we're very good thinkers. We spend a lot of time, time thinking about how to make things work and trying to figure things out. We spend a lot of time problem solving our way into our success. And in the spiritual development space in particular, this is challenging because there's so many people who are out there saying, well, you know, uh, we have to get out of our heads and we have to stop thinking so much and we have to rely on our intuition. And those are all okay things to say. But when you are very bright, when you are creative, when you are intuitive, when you have a neurodiverse brain in your head, we kind of like hanging out up in the, oh, you know, the thinking world. I like hanging out in my brain. I like my brain. I like thinking about things. So we get this mixed message of it's not okay to be thinking about things, but it's really hard to do anything else. And what I will submit to you, what I will suggest is that especially when we do the Wired for Wealth sessions, one of the outcomes of the Wired for Wealth sessions that I've been doing is I've been activating people's connection to the original mind. And what I have discovered is that the reason that there are so many of us who are spending so much time figuring things out, problem solving, making sense of things, putting puzzle pieces together and so on, uh, that what we're actually looking for is to access the original mind. And the original mind is the, is the storehouse of our imagination and our immense potential and our creativity. That's where all the good stuff is. So I don't want us as neurodivergent entrepreneurs to come out of our thinking mind. What I do want us to do is access the original mind. And that is actually where all the solutions are for the challenges you've been having in your business and so on, as well as the uh, innovations that you've been seeking out for yourself and for business and for other people. Let me see if there's anything else that I would like to cover today because I feel like that there is something. I want to talk more just for a few minutes around. Uh... So this is the last thing that I will like to talk about is that when you have a neurodiverse brain, you don't need more strategy. You don't need more mindset work either. Mindset work actually doesn't work for a couple of different reasons. As it turns out, mindset actually adds very, very little in terms of positive outcomes to any kind of results that you might want to get, even though it's one of the most focused on in spiritual entrepreneurship space. I have to do my mindset work. I just need to work on my mindset. If I'm not having the results that I will like to have, I will like to work on my mindset and that will shift everything. And in fact, it doesn't. And especially if you've got a neurodiverse brain in your head, that mindset work that you're using to clear your money blocks, that um, that's one of the other reasons that your income is about a quarter of what it could and ought to be. Because the thing is that mindset work can't break through brain-based conditions like difficulty staying focused and problems with motivation, difficulty planning and organizing money-making activities and regulating motions and things like that. And so that was just another example of how when we have neurodivergent brains, we cannot expect that the strategies, the uh, instructions, the coaching from people who don't understand our brains, perhaps don't have brains like ours, and then don't understand them on top of it. Uh, that's why we can't, we, it just doesn't work for us. So we have to find another way. And the best way that I have been really focusing on right now is rewiring the brain, optimizing the brain to focus, to be able to make decisions more quickly, to keep it out of overwhelm, to keep it from kind of uh, glitching out so that you can actually do the things that you're here to do. And that is why I am here. And I am so glad you're here with me. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. do me a favor, a couple of things. One is if you got a lot out of this episode and you know somebody who has a neurodiverse brain and um, who's a spiritual entrepreneur, send this to them because I want people to know uh, that there is a solution. There is a solution to, it's not even a problem of being neurodiverse. It is just that we have to have another angle or another perspective that we are going to be working in, in order to accomplish what we came here to accomplish. So send, send them the podcast episode and let them know about it. 
Uh, if you really loved it, please leave a five star review or just a really good review in the podcast so that more people can learn about the podcast and share it with your communities. And then uh, if you would like to learn more about Wired for Wealth, the brain optimization session that I've been talking about on today's episode, you can uh, email me robin at drrobinmckay.com and we will send you over all the information so you can um, see if that fits for you. And if it is, I will be more than happy to wire your brain for wealth because that after all is why I am here. And I want to thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on the next episode. Thank you.